just to get into a little bit of the conceptual differences between Misra and Cert, um, both of them, in terms of the rules that they that they um, enunciate and list, uh, they both have a, a split between the weaker rules and the, the vaguer ones, let's say, and the ones that are, are more specific and perhaps more required. So they both have the, the breakout of, say, directives and rules and recommendations and rules in the CERT side. But one difference on, on the MISRA side is that it certainly in the 2012 edition, it pays very close attention to whether the particular rules can be automatically enforced. Now, you could say that that's because the co you know, various tool vendors got involved in the creation of the MISRA rules, but it, it's actually a really important point that there's no point in having a large collection of rules if you don't have a, 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 a reasonable means to achieve it, to achieve compliance to it. So having an automatic enforcement measure against any rule is really actually quite critical. I mean, the very next step is to have a, a way to very clearly state what constitutes compliance in all the different um, flavors of how that rule might be enforced, you know, looking at different code samples and looking at the edge cases around any particular rule. And uh, of course, programming research are very keen for that to be created, in fact. Um, and so, so what I'll just do in the next couple of slides actually is just go through a couple of different uh, rule examples to try and highlight some of the differences that, that we've uh, seen and that the MISRA committee would recognize, in fact, about uh, the difference between MISRA and CERT. So MISRA tends to be a bit more prescriptive. So there's a couple of examples here that kind of show, that show up that point. Um, in you can see that the, the little icon for the CERT rule on, on the left-hand side and then the MISRA icon. And the, the CERT rule name is basically DCL, for example, is in the declaration grouping, if you're not familiar with it. And then there's an actual rule number beside that. And then MISRA just has rules in, in different uh, chapters of the, the MISRA document. So in, in the case of CERT, there's a very generic general purpose um, rule that you declare objects with appropriate storage durations. Good advice, general advice. MISRA goes kind of more, more specific and more prescriptive about that and says that the address of an object with automatic storage shall not be copied to another object that persists after the first object has ceased to exist. This is saying, I suppose, basically the same thing but in a more spe uh, specific fashion. Um, CERT has uh, STR 37 talks about uh, arguments to character handling functions must be representable as unsigned car. Um, MISRA is a little more specific about what the rules should be and it talks about a narrower essential type. And if you're wondering what essential type is, that's a MISRA uh, definition laid on top of the um, the type system of C, which is itself is a little bit um, tricky to work with. So MISRA came up with an essential type system that for any specific implementation describes what um, each, each uh, integer, car, and so on type um, essentially is. So you could say that there are some differences in, in how the rules get expressed and, and, and how they go about trying to prohibit or limit certain activities, certain um, uh, behaviors. Um, so uh, MISRA can be also be more broad, where CERT is more specific. So uh, MISRA has a rule that there will be no, occur no occurrence of undefined or critical unspecified behavior, which is a directive. It's not, it's not specific, it's very broad in nature. And that actually corresponds to two, at least two, in fact many more, I think, CERT rules which say don't modify constant objects and do not access freed memory, which are more specific and you know, cover much the same areas. Um, so the next area, I mentioned just a, just, um, a while ago about um, essential types and um, so 
this is w another area, obviously, where there's quite a big difference. Or certainly, I mean, Misra is just unique in this regard because what it's doing is it's r it's it's come up with a, a model of essential type, which is a type. The idea is that uh, there are th you've got your type system, and your your natural type system in C suffers all of these things: promotion of integers, uh, dealing with constants, character constants. And, and in all those areas, there is um, a balancing of arguments. There is a promotion of arguments in order to perform any of those expressions, uh, logical expressions, or dealing with bit fields and so on. So there's a lot of work that goes on built into the language, a lot of language rules covering how you balance uh, an int and a car when you want to perform some comparison or op, you know expression on the two of them. So Misra, and, and it's incredibly complicated actually is, is how it ends up being because of you know you're, you're talking about different sizes and types and and um, and you know signness of, of uh, items so Misra came up with an essential type system to try and deal with this and simplify it and you might argue how is it simplified by adding something on top of the type system but how and ever it's done that and it's made a set of rules based on essential type which in theory make it more clear for users and developers who experience, you know, I'm not being, my code is not Misra compliant. So by comparison with that, CERT just uses the standard types. And it has a couple of rules. It probably has a lot, many more rules, but we've certainly picked out a couple of rules that, that cover uh, some of the guidance covering some of the same issues that might happen when you end up promoting and balancing types in order to perform operations or in expressions. Um, it was mentioned earlier about the fact that Misery doesn't allow um, uh, dynamic memory allocation. I mean, that's a coding rule choice. Obviously, every application has to decide what it's going to do. But, but Misra's position is that it doesn't permit dynamic memory allocation. Doesn't allow doesn't mean that you can't deviate from that and, and then proceed to take all the care and caution you need to. Of course, that's 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 uh, actually a given. And of course, CERT, on the other hand, recognizes that that's certainly part of the world it operates in. That clearly you have, uh, you know, you certainly outside of embedded, you of course have dynamic memory allocation. In fact, you probably have it a lot of the time in em uh, embedded environments. So it has a bunch of rules covering uh, that area. Um, and I'm not going to go into this one in great detail, but it's up on that whiteboard because Robert talked about it, and it's this, um, this you know, issue about the Misra rule, which says when you have a designated initializer to, uh, to initialize an array object, um, you will specify the array explicitly, whereas CERT, in fact, says the opposite of that and says don't do that. And I think the reasons are perfectly sound and rational. And um, I'm not going to speak on behalf of Misra, but I do know that there are some arguments that they still would um, you know, use and lean on that would justify their position on this particular one. Um, so. I'm just going to show a couple of charts about, uh, or one chart, I think, about the comparison in, in rules. But there's, there's a couple of figures that I just will go through, um, first of all, quite quickly. Uh, we have a term not covered, which means that the, um, the Misra, Misra does not have a rule which addresses the intent of the secure coding rule in CERT. Partially covered, which says that there are one or more rules which contribute to the coding rule, but um, may not be complete or may it may be weak in respect to the entire recommendation in the CERT rule. Uh, covered means that there's one or more rules in MISRA which do cover the rule fully. And then contradiction is actually only going to refer to the item on the previous slide, so I think we can probably just ignore that for the minute. And then here are the figures. Um, there were two studies done. One was an assessment that was done at a, at a, at a um, a seminar or at a, at a presentation, I think earlier this year, and I have a link to it that'll show up later on in this slide set. And the other is um, a Misra working group assessment that was done against CERT um, back just over a year ago, I guess. 
And um, you know, looking at those figures, um, the biggest issue would be these numbers here, where you know, MISRA doesn't have explicit cover for certain rules and cert. And of course, by the same, you know, on the, uh, you know, on the other hand, you might say that MISRA also already has these directives that say don't rely on unspecified behavior or undefined behavior. And, and that, in a certain kind of a way, covers the rules, but it doesn't really because it doesn't s specifically say what you can or can't do. But what you're really saying at this point is you're now relying on the tool vendor and the capabilities of the tool that you may be using, because hopefully you're doing this automatically, to actually cover these points properly. 